It's incredible. Uh, you know, we talk as a department all the time of how it was here uh, back in the day. And you know, uh, it was running and then you would go and do the goalkeeping training. So you'd do everything that an outfield player would do and then you'd be expected from an anaerobic perspective and a power athlete to maximise your performance in those split seconds, react to things that were coming at 80 miles an hour and be this all-round athlete. The revelation, I'd suppose, in goalkeeping is the fact that they are an anaerobic athlete. So they're a power athlete. And I think the old days where it was almost let's do 100 dives in the space of two minutes or let's get really big, bulky and let's be this, this man mountain in goal has really changed and now it's considered an athletic area, it's an athletic position and that therefore means that the gym based programmes and obviously the on field work needs to reflect that. As a power athlete we're sort of making them the best athlete that they could possibly can be for the sport that they're doing or the position that they're doing. They need to be everything that a um, an ideal speed power athlete needs to be but what we don't need to neglect is the other side which is the control the ability to be robust throughout an entire season the basis that we've come as a staff and myself as an individual just understanding what is the context behind what we do obviously with matt parker here our goalkeeper analyst it's really important that the data he collects and the information that he provides back we can then use on field or within the gym if you can combine the physical with the sort of technical and move that onto the pitch, so if a goalkeeper can get from one end of the goal to the other to make the save, so it's understanding what physical output that can read and what technique of save that was, because then that's when you're really able to build a profile of the keeper and understand maybe they need that physical output and that technique of save to make that save. You can then coach them based on the physical output, the technical output and the potential sort of um, occurrences which will happen in the game. Average shot from this outfield player on his right foot is 15 yards out. If you position yourself here and you exert this much amount of physical data and use this save type you will be more successful than if you use this save type and that physical output. Oh, you use everything. Um, you know, you look at how many, um, you know, it's also for scouting, you know, how many crosses do they put in, how many shots do they take from certain areas, what are their tendencies. So you can look at many different statistics and then from an obviously goalkeeping point of view, your distribution stats, how many times did you hit the right area that you were asked to hit, uh, was the first contact ours or theirs, were you able to put that ball in a better spot? So there's many different things that you can look at from an analytical point of view. And um, like I said, if used in the right way, it can be very beneficial. You know, after a weekend game, the, the first couple of days will sort of be more recovery, a little bit more active recovery, just getting the body going again. And then the middle of the week will be the, the, the part of the week where you really get your work in. And then it's, it slows off towards the game time and sharpens up really short, sharp sessions. Uh, make sure you feel the ball and get it very specific to what you're about to face on that weekend against that opponent. So our, our, our work weeks are very similar in that regard. Obviously, the season goes on, you will have to manage yourself a bit more in the workload, but uh, that's generally how, how our week looks. Matt came to us with a goalkeeper that was conceding more goals down to his left-hand side a few weeks ago. We looked back at the data and we could see that he was actually diving less to his left-hand side than he was to his right-hand side. Over a 24-week period, in fact, um, we tested, retested, and look back at the data from an analyst perspective and also from a, a sports science perspective and a coaching perspective and we found vast improvements going from sort of a 30% dive to his left, 70% dive to his right to almost a 50-50 balance now. And you know you look at it nowadays and you analyse the data that we get back and you know the goalkeepers cover 5.2 kilometres in a game, most of it is walking and then you analyse it and it's a high speed running perspective they may only cover 15 to 20 metres so you look at that what are you asking the goalkeeper to do? You're asking them to run, you know, five, six, seven miles in a pre-season training program, but they would never do that on field. So I think the main thing that we've sort of looked at is what are the demands of the game? How do we now put them into practice on and off the field? I think it's down to the individual. Uh, and I think it comes down to, you've got the ultimate professionals here at the club. You've got the ultimate professionals in a Premier League environment. 
they ultimately want to be the best. They ultimately want to play at the highest level. So they'll grab anything they can or buy into anything they can to either keep them on field, improve them on field, or ascertain those 1% that they possibly can get. So I think the buy-in really comes from the player. There are so many different demands that a goalkeeper has to place upon themselves and that we have to give them as coaches. The small details that can either cost you a goal or can be a match-winning save in the 90th minute. And those tiny details are, are, are huge.